Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now before we get started on my card of the week, I do want to quickly apologise for the fact that I haven't been able to release a video over the past week or two. And things have just been really, really hectic in my personal life and there's been a lot going on. So do forgive me, but I am back on the wagon now so we won't dwell on it too long. And we're actually going to make up for having card of the week this week, not having one last week, by having three this week. And that's going to be the Warriors of Darkness that have been shown for Opus 8 in Diana, Nucked and Alba. And I really wanted to talk about these cards because I honestly think that they're amazing and they create an engine in and of themselves. Now before we get started, don't forget to check out all of the social links in the description box below, including my Discord channel where we talk about all things Final Fantasy TCG and Opera Omnia and a bunch of other stuff as well. We have a really, really nice blossoming community, so definitely come and join in with that. My Patreon link if you want to support the channel further, which will allow you access to all of my videos earlier than everybody else and also get you special mentions at the end of every video. And also my Twitch channel where I stream a lot of Opera Omnia and I'm actually like building my community for TCG back up, so I'll be streaming a lot of games for that soon too. And I'm also looking at playing Final Fantasy 9 as well on stream seeing as that's just come out on the Switch so definitely come and check that out if you fancy it. Now going into the cards that I wanted to talk about today in Diana, Alba and Nacht, Diana was actually featured a while ago on a card of the week for Final Fantasy TCG's official page but I wanted to sort of stop on each of these cards because I actually having read Alba having been just revealed as well as Nacht, I honestly think that Diana might be a little bit amazing and that's because Alba is pretty amazing by herself. And we've only had three cards spoiled for the Warriors of Darkness archetype within Opus 8. And if there are any more, then these cards are going to be scary. Alba has an EX burst that is extremely relevant just by itself. And, you know, in that you can dull things for as many Warrior of Darknesses as you have out. And if your opponent has two or more dull forwards, she becomes Illua Mark II. Which, Illua Mark I was pretty crazy. But this one, going in a deck that shares a colour with her, makes that archetype really, really quite frightening. And the fact that you can pull the, her back with uh, Diana and make her stronger with Diana is also really scary. So you don't... It's like if we get even one more Lightning Warrior of Darkness, you could forget Narked in the Earth part of that deck altogether. But Narked isn't too bad either. You know, Narked being a 8k guy for 4 CP in Earth is nothing special, but if you have another Warrior of Darkness other than him, then he becomes a 9k Brave for 4 CP, which is actually pretty solid. And then his activated ability is double X, which means you have to pay X twice, just to clarify. Then you choose a forward or monster, if its cost is X, then you break it. And it's only playable once per turn and only during your turn. This is actually really good. It's expensive if you want to start breaking forwards with it, but having a natural defense to things like Cactar and Liak is really handy, and being able to just go, I discard a card, because you can, because the, the reason that I think that that works, being able to discard one card to pay for two CP that you could split across the two Xs, is because you can pay a uh, one and fire cost, for example, by just discarding a fire card. So I, I hope that that's right. And I, if I'm wrong, then forgive me, but that's my reasoning as to thinking why that would work. But discard a card, break a cactar, seems pretty good to me. And with Urianje decks doing the circuits at the moment, it's definitely a nice anti-metical. The S ability I don't think is anything special. Honestly, I'd probably rather keep hold of um, the Nucked in my hand, unless I had a Diana, at which point I could use the S ability, play Diana, and then pick it straight back up again. That's quite nice, but I don't think that's really that important. But I think, honestly, Diana is the reason that I really like this archetype in general. Um, just because having a, a 1 CP card that can return such strong cards back to your hand and still have a relevant ability to make them stronger is really nice in general. Like making Nucked an 11k Brave Attacker is pretty nice. And then having Alba having haste and dulling everything and then attacking straight away is really strong. And you only actually have to have one other card out. So honestly, I think playing Nacked first is the best idea, even though he's weaker to begin with. Because then you play Alba, dull two of their guys, because you have two guy Warrior of Darkness out, that then makes Alba have haste and intangibility. You attack with Alba, and then you attack with Nux now that he has Brave, you've taken two points of damage off of them, and now you have a 9k guy really undercostedly. And then if either of them dies, you can play Diana and then return it. It's really, really powerful. And then if Alba, being an EX burst as well, means you're naturally adding EX bursts to the deck, and then you obviously in Lightning have 
all manner of really nasty EX bursts. If you could go Mono Lightning with this, but I do think that if we want to go Mono Lightning, we need at least one more Warrior of Darkness. If there's a backup Warrior of Darkness, then that blows this wide open. But assuming that there isn't, then we'd like to see one more Warrior of Darkness in Lightning come about before this is really strong in Mono Lightning, because then you have access to Idea, Odin, Alba, and there's loads of things that are, like, are really, really powerful all of a sudden. I would like to think that Amon is still playable, but honestly, Alba is just that much more powerful than he is. I think she just exemplifies this come into play and dull cards effect so well. And in that way that Lightning does, like we've had Lightning back in the day that was that saw play for a similar reason, and Alba kind of just blows her out of the water. Kate Sith as well. And now Amon, who was very, very powerful for a very long time, but I think now that we're seeing cards like Alba come about, he probably is gonna see significantly less play because she's just that damn good. So that's going to be it for this week's card of the week, or cards of the week if you like, because there's three of them. Let me know what you think of Diana, Alba and Nact in the comments below, and also let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see for FFTCG in the future. I'm looking at trying to travel around a bit more to go to some of the bigger tournaments and actually play for a change, god forbid. And then uh, hopefully I'll get to see a load of you guys then. So as I said before, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out all the social links in the description box below, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. So stay tuned and keep on watching, and I'll be back very, very soon. See you later.